Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Sarzinski will not be able to make it tonight, so it'll be the four of us. We have um, not a lot to do, but we do have the uh, PVPC going to be here for some general information and to meet the new replacement of Larry. Uh, let's see. Did you have a chance to look at the pride plans, John? No. No, not yet. So we're not ready to sign well, off. Well, we, you know, here's, here's what they're basically just saying they're renumbered the stuff. So, um, I'd say I'm going to make a motion to amend according to what they say their revised dates are. Okay. And um, if, um, if you find that anything is incorrect when you look at it, we can yell at them again. Okay. Okay. That's all that they're saying is just they change the dates on this? Dates and some numberings. And the dates and numberings, that's what they're saying. They, we you mean what, the sheet numbers? Yes. In yeah. August of 1916, we approved a set of plans that were dated May of 16. And you look down this list, and the only thing that was not changed was the, uh, it looks like the, uh, the first page and the lighting proposal date back to 2016. Everything else was updated one way or another to uh, reflect a change of conditions or something like that. Okay. So um, without reading it all, um, I'll make a motion to amend Pride by updating the uh, list of drawings that uh, are part of the plan. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Okay. Um, while we're waiting for Larry, we've got a couple bills to pay. We have our first quarter of 2018 pay to approve for each of us, total of 575. Your motion. I'll make a motion to approve payroll. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0, 1 absent. And we need some stamps. Stamps are 50 cents each beginning in 2018. So, so moved. Looking for $250. Motion. Second. Mm -hmm. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 401 absent. Some general comments. Thank you. The Finance Committee is having a meeting on April 4th at 6 o'clock in the town hall to talk about uh, the fiscal 2019 budget and some of the draft articles for the town annual town meeting. I the, think that's a tri-board meeting. I think oh, that, that's, that's, that's the finance committee. Okay. There's, also, there's also a general department meeting at 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow um, to discuss the 2018 and 19 budget and let's see, Capital Planning Committee, some to basically discuss elections, select like board, warrant, and some of the town meeting articles. So, so I just want to note the death of uh, passing of John Weshkevitz, went to his uh, wake this afternoon, been active in the town for many years, and most recently as the part-time driver of the senior center uh, okay. bus. He will leave us. I remember he, everybody called him, uh, uh, was it, what was his nickname? Yaiko. Yaiko. Yaiko, yeah. Classmate. 
Those are what? Classmate? It's a classmate. Holy crabs. Okay. And well, we're waiting for Larry. I've got some information on the oh, CPA yep. committee. Okay. Uh, I'm the planning board representative to the CPA committee and just got an email from the state regarding the funding or lack of funding. As you know, Hadley passed the CPA tax of 3% and the state promised the funding of equal shares. In other words, if a town kicked in a certain amount of money, the state would match it. Well, now the increase in number of towns has gone up to 172 towns and the amount of money has not changed or the pool of money has not changed. So the contribution now from the state is at 11.2%. That's with the, uh, the 2018 budget. So the state once again has uh, kind of reneged on their promise, but they're going to allow us to increase the tax to the Registry of Deeds. Evidently, when you transfer to the Registry of Deeds, some of that money goes into right. CPA funding. So they're going to allow for an increase in uh, Registry of Deeds. Uh, Who's going to increase that? The state is? The state is. The state will, yeah. Increase the fees. Yeah. They're going to increase the fee or just increase the split? Well, they're going to increase the fees, and if you have 3% like Hadley does, uh, they're going to favor those towns who have a 3% in giving them a larger contribution. Okay. Of course they will, because uh, as opposed to those communities who have 1% and 2%. But they still reduced it from 50% match, right? Correct. Down to 11%? Well, 11%, I'm not sure if that's just the state funding or is that the Registry of Deeds pool? No, that, is the, that is the state funding. It comes from the Registry of Deeds. So that why is. doesn't that... Why so doesn't, it's 11.5% does it? from the state in the first round. And uh, there is, you know, it was part of it, it was email with the people that are involved in the community preservation. They want to lobby your legislators and hope that they would increase the number and the funding. So why doesn't the town reduce their share instead of 3% or 1%? Well, once again, I don't want to make this too much of a political comment, but when I was in practice, the state sh share of Mass Health Medicaid was 18% uh, of the budget. And just, I talked to Peter Kokot just before he passed away, and he, he was on a committee and said, now the state share is 40%. Of course, there's going to be some reimbursement from the federal government, but nevertheless, that part of the budget has skyrocketed. So there's not going to be a lot of money left over for roads, bridges, schools, or anything else. Uh, it's going to be tight unless there's a dramatic tax increase somewhere. Well, let me ask you something. What, what does the CPA have in their slush fund? Uh, we've got, there's a certain amount of not committed money, a certain amount of money committed, and I would say the total amount is uh, seven or 800000 I, th I someone told me it was a million points. Well, so. it it can be if you add up all the monies we still hold. Some of the monies we have uh, allocated, but it has not been spent. So as the bills come in, so you're right. There could be that amount of money in the fund, but some of it is already allocated. But we just got a breakdown. Finally, the the finances are are not as accurate as I would like to see them. So, but Larry is going to be doing a policy thing for the uh, CPA, or you probably are. Probably. probably. One thing I don't like about that CPA, you got to go by their guidelines, and that, as far as I'm concerned, That's is nothing but a luxury tax. Yeah. We, we need money to fix our infrastructure and everything else, that but the state close. says you can't use it for this, but we're paying the biggest portion. This, to me, is bull. I totally agree, but that's when the legislation was passed in order to get the number of votes from the cities and towns. Mm -hmm. That's that's why the town should reduce it and take that money and put that into our infrastructure and things that we well, need that, to fix. That may be a good point, right? It? But uh, I was contacted by Jane Nevin Smith for the Senior Center Building Committee. 
They were initially planning to file their site plan approval tonight. They have kicked it off six weeks to uh, May 15th to file. Okay. Well, that's fine. So file is just a file, and then we do our scheduling after that. We schedule the hearings and the reviews. Don't you don't you vote to have it put on there, or is it just no, that? No, they, they just come in and file. That, that is not going to be the, the hearing. That's just going to be they're going to come in with the drawings, and then we'll schedule the public hearing once they file. It's so the anybody can in just walk in and then it's automatically filed? Yes. Yep. Yep. What if you don't accept it? We've never not accepted something. No. The only reason we would not accept the filing is if the application was incomplete. Yes. Not, not the right. No, we, we've, we've told, we've sent, we have sent people back because they haven't had all the, the uh, stuff like the correct number of drawings, the uh, mailing lists, or the application. Well, how stuff. can you put them down there without seeing stuff? Well, they come in with the drawings and the application yeah, well, and should. the sets of abutters, and we schedule a public hearing. Well, if they do that, then is they the library must... coming in as well? No, the library, so. but that's why the senior center is delaying its filing because they are working with the library on a common drainage plan. And the library had not started working on a drainage plan, so. They were not ready to file, and I think we made it pretty clear that we right. wanted the filing to show yes. parking and drainage for the entire right. parcel. Correct. Right. Yeah. The uh, and should be made perfectly clear that this is not picking on them in any way, shape, or form, and that we do it for every development. Yeah, I did want. explain. It was the same thing we did for Home Depot. We wanted to see complete drainage design and parking requirements for yeah. the entire parcel. Right. right, for the build-out. When they, whatever it might be, for build-out. The, uh, I did talk to the Jane and I talked to their architect. I says, absolutely you need to have the reviewing drainage plan done by Separate engineer. They were going to use, I believe, Mark from Berkshire Design. I says, and if you want to avoid spending the money for a review of zoning, I says the planning board will review it for zoning compliance. The downside of that is uh, you'll save some money, more than likely, but it'll also draw out the hearing process because that's going to take longer probably than if you have an engineer engineer do it. So I says that'll be your choice when you come in, which way you want to do it. And they understood. I'll tell you, I got a big problem with that with that drainage, that underground drainage uh, uh, system, because what they did in this building, if you guys recall, they put leaching basins on this north wall, and then they ended up with mold on this whole side of this building downstairs, and that's the same things that's going to happen to those houses and the abutters when they put all that water. Or when, it, when we see the plan, we can talk about it. I know, but it just, what, what yeah. gets me is an architect turns around and signs off under this, right? And he's not held liable for that. Then the who is the town? That's what yeah. I, I, well, can, I can't understand. We'll, we'll love to see how that, what that is when, when, we, when we see the plans. You want me to get Larry? Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sure. Maybe. Um, so it's kind I, of a hodgepodge of uh, talking with Larry and finalizing whatever else we're going to be doing. Yep. Oh, Big would, would you guys go outside and have a powwow? No, no, shorter the. Uh, Show me your map. The plat. Oh. With all the APR, all the reserve farmland and stuff. Yeah. We're going over the uh, the master plan. Uh, you know, using oh. the guy to save everything else. Yeah. Well, we were a good kickoff for it because when Dukakis signed the bill, yeah. we signed it in the farmhouse in Hadley. Oh, well, he oh. did that even better. Is it your farmhouse in Hadley? No, the uh, Parsons. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. This is Susan Westa, W-E-S-T-A. Westa? Yes, yep. Susan Westa. Susan is replacing me. She'll be taking over uh, the Hadley uh, 
PBA program, you know, so we take over actually all of the PBA programs that we have. Um, so I brought her in tonight, and this is her introduction. I thought we could go over the uh, implementation plan uh, for the master plan and kind of highlight uh, those things that you kind of want to start her working on, and that'll sort of be the framework for the next scope uh, for next year's planning board assistance program. Okay. Yeah. So, did everybody bring their copies that I gave them two weeks ago? No, I didn't bring them in. No. Okay, fair enough. I was upset okay. today. We're, we're, we're familiar. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, in case you need a refresher. Okay. There you go. Um, so I think it's a matter of, you know, starting off with, uh, uh, you know, higher priority ones, the ones that we thought would be uh, most easily achievable in the shortest time frame. Okay. So, Susan, do you want to kind of run down? Yeah, she's, sure. she's been going over these for the last, she's, she's been on almost a month. Almost. Almost. Okay. Almost wow. her anniversary. <laughs> Where do you originate from? I actually originate from Buffalo, New York, but I've been living in Connecticut for the last 20 years. Okay. okay where in Connecticut? In stores. Oh, way down there. Yeah. <laughs> Stores is the home of PU Con. Right, I understand. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. Several classmates went there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not that different from here. Yeah, so I think you know, she's got a little flavor of the Amherst uh, you know, town gown type, type mm -hmm. relationship. I mean, the problems and issues that go along with it. Absolutely. I've been on the planning Are you over it yet with the Yukon Women Lucy? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so two maybe, years in a row. Maybe it would be helpful to start by getting to know us. Yeah, I'll be there. We'll, 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 we'll watch her, into things. Let her continue. Yeah, she's got a few more things. Okay. Right, her resume. And then I think okay. that's okay. a good okay. idea. Okay. okay. You can really intimidate her as we go across the board. Okay. okay. So my background is in community and environmental planning. Oh, also, she was on the planning board. I was on the planning board for the last five years in the town of Mansfield, where Yukon is. Um, I have a master's degree in environmental science and started out my career doing environmental planning work in consulting firms and I got more into community planning work uh, through that opportunity. Uh, then I moved to Connecticut 20 years ago because my husband took a position teaching at UConn and I then began working for the University of Connecticut Cooperative Extension. Uh, for an organization called the Green Valley Institute, and we did land use education programs for communities in northeastern Connecticut, which is a fairly rural region um, where the university is, um, and uh, communities that are much more rural than that, too. Um, in some ways, similar to here, uh, at driving around today, the main difference I notice in the land is that it's not flat. <laughs> in northeastern Connecticut, it is hilly. Um, but there are farms there and a lot of forest land as well. Uh, and then for the last five or six years, I've been uh, focusing on downtown and village center revitalization with the Connecticut Main Street Center. So I have quite a breadth of planning related experience, and I'm excited to be able to uh, start sharing that now in Pioneer Valley. Okay. I'm Joseph Rodnick. I've been on the planning board for 45 years. Wow. So the original intent was growing up on a farm, we wanted to try to keep as much open space and preservation of farmland that was possible. Mm -hmm. But it has morphed into a semi-career. <laughs> and I'm Bill Dwyer, I'm a lawyer, and I've mm -hmm. been on the board for 31 years. 73, keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Axelowski, I've been on the planning board for 35 years. That's over 100. <laughs> I'm a semi-retired engineer, mechanical engineer. Okay. Running for re-election, you know, for re-election this year. So at the end of this, it'll be, you know, according to five-year term, so that'll be a, that'll be 40 years. Some paid political ad. <laughs> paid political ad. Yeah, I'm running on a post. So, okay. so um, anyway, and just a little bit about. The, the Valley, I don't know if Larry's told you much about it, you've learned much about it, but the Connecticut River Valley, which I have obviously is Hadley, there is some of the most fertile land in America. The only land that is more fertile, considered more fertile than the Connecticut River Valley mm -hmm. basin is the Mississippi River Delta. That's a fact. And the U.S. 
government refers to soil as Hadley soil. And it's because of the glaciers eons ago. And from about, I want to say, Sunderland, <coughs> take, um, through probably up to about Holyoke. And then when you get below Holyoke, of course, you've got the cities that are kind of <coughs> grown in. But then once you get over the line into Connecticut, you know, the Suffields, the Enfields, and through there, it's very similar soils. Mm -hmm. And Hadley is the largest agricultural community in the state of Mass. We have the most acres in APR of any community in Massachusetts, not per capita, but right. raw, the raw number of acres under agricultural preservation restriction protection is the largest of any community in, in Massachusetts. And what is the primary um, type of farming that is done in town? There's, I would say primary, it's a variety. There's okay. tobacco grown, there's potatoes, corn, mm -hmm asparagus, mm -hmm. um, and vegetables in general. There's a variety of vegetables mm -hmm. grown. And dairy. And dairy. And yeah, there's, there's, it's a there used asparagus you're going to find. Yeah. Hadley's I have been Hadley. to the asparagus festival. Yeah, Hadley, Hadley, <laughs> Hadley it's, it's, they call it Hadley asparagus, but all the, again, up and down the Connecticut River Valley, it's very similar. But Hadley asparagus, you go to Boston, and Hadley asparagus is a premium. Yeah. Um, and a lot, I mean, Years ago, there was thousands of acres grown when a, a, a disease, a, a, a disease or, or blight wiped, not, kind of wiped fungus. it out. A fungus wiped it out about probably 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and they've since been uh, reintroduced with a resistant crop, and is beginning to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. And most of the farmers that raise it around here literally sell locally almost everything they raise. I don't know how much is actually shipped to Boston anymore. I couldn't answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, sweet corn obviously is a big crop. Mm -hmm. uh, tobacco is up and down. Last year was a very good crop, good price for it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of farmers talking about raising it again. But there's so many tobacco barns that have been removed for one reason or another without the space to, to dry it or to cure it. Um, they're limited what they could be really be raised. Yeah, tobacco used to be huge. Yeah, shade uh, tobacco was yeah. huge up and down the valley. I mean, there was thousands of acres of between shade and field tobacco. Mm -hmm. And also onions. Onions, onions too. But the, 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 um, the, uh, uh, the leaf was the outside right. for, cigar, for rolling cigars. Yeah. Yeah. Connecticut River Valley tobacco was renowned for that. Yeah, when, when our parents were kids, if you would, or more than that, um, onions were big. Um, onion sets and stuff like that and then it kind of basically stopped being grown for whatever reason and about 40 years ago my uncles had a farm and I raised two acres of onion sets. I was the largest rate grower of onion sets in the whole valley and it drew a lot of attention because how's that going to work? You know, did it work well? Did you make money and this, this and that and everything else? And since then, there's a little bit more onions growing. I mean, they're not raising sets, they're raising the seed and stuff like that. But there's, there's, I wouldn't say there's a lot grown, but it, and that didn't, I'm not taking credit for doing anything except raising it for myself. But some farmers probably got the hint, hey, you know, there's, 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 a, there's a dollar to be made doing that. Why don't you tell them about your uh, sauerkraut enterprise? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go so, ahead. Don't hold nothing back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. John Michkowski, retired, uh, self-employed in the welding business, mm -hmm. on a planning board for four years. This is the new, that's the old. Mm -hmm. You've been on the yeah. select board, you've yeah. been... Uh, Sewer commissioner, yeah. served on yeah. John, all John, kinds John, of John's got a lot of years at various town boards. And I know all these guys for like 35 years. Uh, 40 years from my time when I started as a planner in Northampton. Oh, so there's a lot, of, uh, yeah. a lot of history. You know, I, I'm that feeling bad good. about leaving you guys. M Mike Sarzinski was not here. He's, uh, yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's out of town today. Yeah. But he's probably the newest member on the board. But he also has a long history of Hampshire County Commissioner and other things in town. So well, he, he, he outdates John. John's at four, but I think Mike's got five. Yeah, okay. He's an experience. But he's got a lot of other experience in yep. town for mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. other town boards. So and he's an investment advisor in Northampton, works for okay. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Right. So these guys have a ton of institutional memory. 
So, and, like and, and they've been doing this really without planning assistance or limited planning assistance for the 40 years. Um, so they are unbelievably experienced. And uh, I think the challenge is going to be when you decide to all retire. Yes. Well, that's, we're, we're working that through. It's, part, it's in the master plan. We'll hire your it kids. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, red kids. I am the daytime contact for the planning board. And okay. any email to planning at hadleyma.org goes directly to me. Okay. <clears throat> and that address is on our, our uh, web page, uh, as well as I'm sure if you just type it into any computer, PVPC. Yeah, we, we, we have a user group for the planning board. They're all okay. So yeah. if, if there's questions at night, Bill is the, Bill literally, like you said, the daytime contact. Yeah. And I'm the nighttime contact. Okay. So if you're working late and you really want to finish this project and get out, he's the one to call. Um, I was, um, I am the um, PVPC commissioner for Hadley. John is the alternate. Okay. And I was the uh, chairman for six years. Oh, all right. A while back. Great. One interesting thing, Jim was talking about the history of the valley. A a great book on the valley by Richard Little, a geohistory professor at Greenfield Community College, is called Dinosaurs, Dunes, and Drifting Continents. It's the history of our valley, how it formed, you know, the drifting of the continents, the glacier that was above our head 20,000 years ago, then melted and formed this great lake Hitchcock, and the dam was at Rocky Hill, Connecticut. And eventually that dam burst and left the sediment in the, the outline of our valley. So it huh. gives you why is this part clay and this part more wow. sandy yeah. loam. So it gives you a great geo history. Yeah. Lake Hitchcock. Pardon? Lake Hitchcock. Lake Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Anyway. Yes. So. Well, that's okay. All right. <laughs> so that's a great start. <laughs> So, oh, also, but Bill's clerk, I'm chairman, okay? Okay. Larry can say that. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, Larry handed me your implementation schedule, and I've taken a look at it. I thought that probably the best thing to do would be to go through those top priorities um, that you identified for this year, um, the things that you identified in 2018 to implement and to find out if you've made any progress on them yet, if um, anything's uh, happened yet, to get me up to speed, and then also to think about, you know, those five or six things that make the most sense to start with um, moving forward. So we'll start right off by disregarding it. Um, <laughs> okay, the whole thing? <laughs> Boy, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just want to put up, make sure it's high on the radar is we need to have a recreational marijuana bylaw ready to go for fall town meeting in early October. So we actually, that means we, <clears throat> we basically have to have it in our hands so we have finalized the text by the end of August. Uh, oh, my plan is to have that done by the end of June. Okay. Uh, that at least a model drafted. Okay. And then Susan will be taking it, you know, town to town. To, and right. To okay. Because obviously the other towns are yeah. concerned right. about yeah. that. So. I, know, I saw East Hampton already adopted one, so yes. they went up and they're wrong. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. I think Hampton well, has. East Hampton. Uh, they just did. has. So there's um, some good ones to look at. Uh, there's, some, there's some to look at. Yes. <laughs> the other thing we've got to do is also this MS4. Back in yeah. December, we got an email from Corinne, yeah. Corinne mm -hmm. yeah. about MS4 and the general bylaw and a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. We didn't take a good look at it, to be honest with okay. you. I went to the MS4 seminar with Marlo, our DPW head, about a month okay. or so ago in Springfield. Learned more than I care to know about MS4. <laughs> right. um, so I came back and I was planning, we were planning on putting something on the annual town meeting warrant next month for this. And when I went through her email, which is pages long on the zoning stuff, and one of the things that I noticed, well, you know, could do something here, could do something here, well, okay. But then she completely, we have a general bylaw on erosion and sediment control, it's that's what they're called, and then we have a zone bylaw and erosion and sediment control. Mm -hmm. The reason that was done, I don't know, maybe 10 plus years ago or so, 
was that any future development would have to comply with zoning. The zone and the regular bylaw, anybody that was already there wasn't was grandfathered in the zoning, but was not grandfathered under the general bylaw, so we had, you know, a catch all of everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. And under the recommendation that she made, she eliminated the zone bylaw and everything was a general bylaw. Mm -hmm. Now I understand the logic to that. <clears throat> the problem is if people are applying for development for new projects, how do they know to comply with the general bylaw if there's no mention in the zone bylaw of it? Because it is mentioned in the zoning bylaw. No. Well, it's supposed to be. It's completely eliminated right. the section. Okay. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. Okay. The way it's I, I, and I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody. I have, I didn't see what she did, so okay. I really can't speak to. So I did email her requesting clarification last week, and okay. have not heard back. Yeah. Okay. She so was all, all, all I'm wondering is, the flow. Okay. yeah, because there's, a, there's a few yeah. things there. One of the questions that I have is that the planning board has the right to amend the general bylaw yeah. without going to public hearings or, or only a public hearing, and and, not, and they can adopt it themselves. Right. However, because the zone bylaw could re could reference that, that in, in a roundabout way, is the planning board now amending zoning bylaw? You want to see where I'm going to? I do. Well, but so, so, so the, the way it's modeled to work is it's done as a general bylaw. Yes. It's done as a general bylaw to pick up those things that aren't subject to zoning, like municipal projects. Oh, I, I understand why it's, it's done supposed to be general. something in every in every facet of your zoning bylaw that deals with the development. Like under site plan review, under special permits, including your subdivision regulations, it's not zoning, it's a different thing. All of those are supposed to have something that references you have to comply with that. Right. And that does, and then whatever that process is, um, and what I normally do is I have, if you're coming in for a site plan review, or you're coming in for a special permit, your stormwater management is part of that. So you are the ones that are doing it, or the peer review who is doing it. But ultimately, for those, since you're the permit authority, it falls under your responsibility. Right. So the grant that she was working yeah. under has <clears throat> expired, but we need to use part of our programming to get a more. The, what the document she gave us really was just what we had sent her with annotations in in the in. You know, set off box, comment box in Word, um, and that we really need more help setting up a schedule of what documents need to be, or what sections need to be amended, and what the exact language of those amendments Absolutely. should be. Yeah. I've done that in other communities. I'm glad you mentioned that because I had no idea. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, and I, I understand. So it's, it's fixable. I understand. Oh yeah, I understand the general bylaw, <laughs> and I agree that it makes sense. Yeah. So I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying we need to. Make sure it does. We need to marry them together yeah. in the appropriate and correct way. That's all. And one of the things that she mentioned that we she recommended no action at this time. Of course, that was back in December. Now that it's almost going to be the annual town meeting, it's not going to be on the annual, and that's okay because whether it's adopted or not, we can still make people comply with MS4. So yeah. I'm not worried about that part of it. But for the long term, we're hoping for the fall town meeting we can make this correction and get that simply. Yeah. Put away. Isn't it though all That's permits funny. you got to comply with all federal, state, and local laws? It's, it's, it's making sure it's incorporated into your process. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you, in fact, are the ones who are approving those permits. Yes. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think there's any question that if somebody was to come in, that's supposed to take effect in June. So somebody comes in in July and they apply. I don't think there's any problem with making them comply with the up to date MS4. I just want to make sure that it's in the books yep. for the longer term mm -hmm. so that there's no question of what everything is right. about. That's all. Uh, well, I, I agree with you, John. But they're going to comply. You're, you're right, John. I mean, the MS4 it starts off with as a mandate from the EPA. This, and the regulations to comply with that are supposed to be developed by your state EPA, mm -hmm. or DEP as we right. have it. And, it's, and they're for regulations on a project by project basis or administered by you guys. Right. The local level, yeah. So there, there is that tier, yeah. But you are correct also that even if it's not on the books, you can still make them do it, and it's to, the, it's to their benefit to do it like that. Yeah. If, as much as the rules were promulgated under prior administration, with the new administration, is there any change that could be coming down the pike? Uh, 
relaxing the rules. Do you like the emission controls? That's a great yeah, example. It is. Uh, I have not heard control have, has to do with California. Yeah, I, I suspect this is low on the list of uh, priorities. Okay. To, yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it's in place in many, many other states. So we are sort of one of the last states to actually do it. Okay. So one point I want to turn Susan, around. when you uh, come with the, the potential bylaw for recreational marijuana, could you give us some of the parameters where there could be some discussion, for example, how many yards away from the school, or mm -hmm. what will the Attorney General allow, what has it allowed in the maximum or the minimum, just some, something we can discuss. Yeah. Uh, can it be near a church or a mosque, because we have a potential mosque? Uh, Isn't it I, I, can, I can answer. I can answer that in particular. No, but just that's my general. Yeah, okay. which is a, a good point yeah. because the retail marijuana, and I call it retail, not recreational, because recreational is by right is for your personal consumption. We're talking about who can sell it. Yes. Um, so I use the word re retail. They're totally not totally different. There are significant differences between that and the and the medical marijuana. Correct. In turn, I mean, the medical marijuana. But it could be in the same facility. What, what, it can be the same what, facility. What do you mean by right? What do you mean by right that it, that it can be by right? What can be by right? You can own six plants. You can oh. grow six plants yourself. If you're, uh, oh, if you're married, you can have 12 plants. Okay. okay. For your own personal consumption. Oh, for That's okay. the recreation. Oh, okay. okay, okay. What I'm talking about are people that are growing it and selling it to okay. you. So okay, okay. Right. All right, I understand. All right, just yeah. want to. Oh. <laughs> but interestingly, uh, for medical marijuana, we, we ran into this here. You know, yep. where it had to be so many feet away from a place where children congregate, and it included churches and all this other stuff. Um, the retail marijuana does not include any of that. I thought it did. It includes elementary schools. Oh, specific, second, specifically it's, schools. It's schools. Right. Okay. It doesn't include churches. It doesn't include daycare. It doesn't include private schools. Uh, it really. Uh, it, and the question is, some towns are putting it in any way. And it's sort of, well, we'll see what the AG's office does when it gets to them. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of that uh, yeah. in the works. Yeah. Well, isn't it that the towns can regulate how many feet away they have to be? You can pick a number, but you can't pick a number that is unreasonable. You can't pick a number that... Ten miles away? You can't pick a number that puts it out of town. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... Uh, but, that's you, but you can't can put in a number. What and what about the number? You can limit, limit the number. number. Yep. Uh, and, and my suggestion would be, if you're limiting it to... Less than 20% of the package stores that you have in town, you need to go back for another public referendum vote. Right. Okay, so you want to pick 21% or more. Um, I advise you not to pick a hard number because the package number of licenses you are, it's not licenses for package stores, it's actual package stores. That may vary. Um, it seems now that towns are richer and Package stores and liquor establishments? Uh, I believe it's packer stores. Package stores. It is packer yes, stores. It is. Okay. It's places, you know, it's not well, a What do you mean, not to, exceed not, how, not to exceed how many package stores you have? You can pick a percentage. So let's say you've got 10 package stores, you can limit it to, to 20, 21%, which would be 2.1 package stores. 2.1, you can say 50%. East Hampton, I think, picked a hard number, which is not what I'm going to suggest that you do, only because if the number of your package stores increases, that might put you below the 20%, and then you'd be out of compliance with this. Yeah, so you're going to be a minimum of 20%? You want to be a minimum, you want to be over 20%. Over 20%. Because if you're under 20%, then you have to do a new public, a new town wide referendum vote on it. So the state has figured that uh, you, you got, uh, recreational marijuana is only 20% as bad as booze? <laughs> no, it, it's more of. Um, at what point mm. do, they, do they want the town to go back and revote the whole thing all over again? Yeah. Uh, and there's a two-step process to revoting now. Yes, yes. It has to do also has to do whether your town initially voted yes or voted no. Right. I think you guys voted yes. Yes, correct. Yes. More majority in favor, so correct. that puts it in a different category. That puts you in a second, different category. How many plants can a recreational marijuana a, a private owner have? Uh, you can have six as an individual, and if you have a two-person household, you can have up to twelve. And if just three people, you can up to twelve. That's it. Yeah. And Not like I'm gonna raise you, it. You can't grow in your backyard. You can't have it in the pot in the window. Uh, you know, getting sun rays. You're gonna be growing it with grow lights in your basement or the spare bedroom you have. Now the uh, mm. the 
if a, if a person wanted to grow for retail use, they're under the limit to 100,000 square feet. It's a canopy that, yeah. Sit, sit. But, but can it be open grow? I think there is a provision that allows. No, it has to be a secure facility. Well, and, that's the problem. It's supposed to be secure, which everybody realizes has got to be in a building. But there is a provision I think they made for farmers to do a collective grow. But I don't know how they're going to. If they're, out, if they're growing it outside, I don't that know how they're going to. Because I thought there was a thing. I don't know how they're going to. I thought there was a thing in there about open and grow, but I'm thinking, how can you possibly you open grow and make it secure? Yeah, That's I don't like think you can. Arm guard. But I know that at the listening sessions that I went to, there were a lot of farmers that came in and saw that this is going to be great. I'm yeah. going to go from corn to pot. Uh, and, and, and it's up and down the valley. In yeah. fact, uh, every community in Franklin County voted yes. In large part, I think, because uh, the farming community thought, wow, we're going to really be able to cash in. But us. growing marijuana is not considered an agricultural crop. That's correct. So if you're growing it, it, an agri... If it, it's I'm, not considered to be agriculturally exempt. Of right, zone. right. So if, you're, if, you're, if, it's not a, if it's not considered an agricultural yeah. crop, then my guess is if you try to grow it on 61A land, you're not growing, you no longer have 61A land. land. That's correct. You're not in compliance with the name. And I will tell you. Is that a question whether it's APR? I don't know. Is it legitimate anymore? No. I, yeah. I put that question to the Office of General Counsel yeah. at Mass Department of Ag Resources, and they flat out said no. Yeah. That to the extent they have, they use federal money. Uh, towards the APR purchases. And <laughs> so you can't grow on an APR land. You cannot grow on an APR that's, land. That's true. That's because it's federal money. That, the, that, 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 that was wondering about yeah, that. The feds still classify this as a class one narcotic. So because right. because yeah. the state get the state doesn't allocate. I'm going to use ten percent of the fed dollars to purchase an APR from you, but no fed dollars to purchase an APR from you. Yeah. They spread fed dollars across all of their APR purchases. So every project is, uh, they, they say that they have accepted money and allowing growth of marijuana would violate the representations they made when they accepted the money. Mm -hmm. Huge. So they, on APR they cannot? On APR yeah. you cannot grow mm -hmm. marijuana. And, and there are also other issues relative to it that I, I was not aware of, but uh, apparently marijuana really absorbs what's in the ground. Uh, and in fact, in the olden days, farmers used marijuana to cleanse their fields, to get all the toxins and the metals and the, the poison, the fertilizer out of it. Corn. To clean it, exactly. And so, and deep radish. And, and so in large part, you know, people that are buying pot off the street, you know, it's not quality control. Whereas the stuff they're doing under this program uh, is tested. And it's tested for all that stuff. So the quality of, of the, uh, the product that you're getting is much uh, cleaner. Uh, than what you would be buying off the street. Mar and from what I've heard, marijuana stinks horribly. Like tobacco smells like tobacco. Um, and I, I mean, what the plant? The plant, yeah, the, the green the, plant, the, smells the, like a skunk. Growth, yeah. growth facilities. Uh, it does and the air smells. quality the controls is a big issue because they, they do. They have a particular uh, odor. It's quite strong. And so there's all kinds of uh, it smells like a skunk. Okay. What the hell is everybody sm smoking skunk for? <laughs> <laughs> when they dry, the, <laughs> maybe I don't know. Yeah, very I, good. I, that's know, what I've heard. People that have gone into license, into, into yeah. grow uh, canopy facilities or grow facilities and grow that is horrible on the farm at the same time. Because like a big it is a schedule one narcotic. So law, these guys are in the house. Yeah. Oh, that's the right. House that's right. So I want you to I've heard. Also, too, being on the bank board, banks cannot accept. It because all banks are federally insured right. lending all, institutions. All However, Colorado did, FDIC did grant an exemption to Colorado yeah. because they want to track the money and tax it. So uh, will there be a blanket exemption, but the federal government doesn't? Yeah, not so far. Not so far no. is right. And I'm not using Colorado as my model. Um, no, I mean, they were uh, first. They, they, had, they were first. They had a lot of mistakes. They had a lot of mistakes. Yeah. There were more. Uh, retail marijuana facilities and there are Starbucks. And there are lots of Starbucks. Yeah. So uh, they're like on every corner. Uh, yeah. So I don't want to completely Side upend track. everything that you had planned to <laughs> yeah. talk about. <laughs> okay. But um, those, those have become priorities. Yep. The MS4 and to a lesser extent, we can 
talk about master so, some things aren't ready to go but those are seem to have made themselves the a and b priorities okay and uh, the master plan update would be the c priority and within that we'll probably want to pick out some things right. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean for what is happening it sounds like recreational marijuana is being uh, uh, built by PBPC in general as a model, and they can be fine tuned to the different towns. Right. Yes. And That's the MS4, important. I don't think, is a humongous task. I think it's really clarifying okay. what was originally right. meant. And then how do we simply integrate the general by referencing it into the regular zone bylaws so we don't make a mess of it? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, so, but is the state all done with their part putting what they want to do, the EPA, the DEP, are they all done with just about with their part? Yep. They are? Yeah. Okay. So what Corinne did was fine to a point. Mm -hmm. I think it was completely compliant with the terms of the grant, which okay. was to highlight what needed to be done. But what she didn't do was what we need you to do, which is actually cut and paste. Cut and paste you know, give us, give us the the exact language for the. If we're going to have to ch make changes to 12 sections of the zoning bylaw, we want the exact language that's coming out and the exact language that's going in. Yep. I would prefer, if possible, not to amend a bunch of different sections. Sure. I would like to make, if we had to, like in. The administrative part say make a general statement because if because ms4 has been updated this is at least the second time mm. and it's going to be updated again in a number in probably not too many years so rather than going through and always doing this yeah. and doing this and doing this mm -hmm. i would like to have one section that simply says this is how we're going to comply no matter where the zone bylaw applies so that it applies to all sections, we could have a, we could have a general um, erosion and control that references the actual general bylaw, mm -hmm. but something in administrative, whether it be site plan approval or this or this or this, this is what you're going to comply with in some kind of a general term, as opposed to every time having to go through and you know modify six or seven other sections. It's just going to be a mess. Every time you well, I an mean, MS4 is stormwater management. Right. Larry, I, I've, I've heard with this MS4 yeah. is going to come in a drainage tax. Uh, they call it a stormwater utility. Is uh, that going to... It's a town by town. Uh, somebody, a town by town would adopt. The rain we, tax? We did it. Right. We, yeah, is we is did that going to be mandated? In, we adopted it when I was in Westfield. Is that going to be mandated or is that just town by town? It's going to be high. You know, uh, we did it in Westfield okay. because that was a way to raise the money we needed to to have the funds to comply with it. Yeah, Northampton did it. Yeah. Right. That yeah. was to, their well, excuse Chico, was to Chico, Chico 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 Westfield, Northampton, Fall River. Uh, I'm talking about locally around here, and Fall I think River Long Meadow has done it. He got beat because he proposed yeah. the rain tax. I think, was Greenfield, did Greenfield adopt something? I'm not sure about Greenfield. There's, I think there's one Franklin County town, and I think there's those four towns yeah. in Hampshire and Hamden. Yeah. Because it's not, you know, it's not without cost. Yeah, I know because the guy. But I mean, when a town appropriates money to do a specific thing, they do that. But yeah. when they appropriate and make a tax, that tax is forever. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I I don't like all this luxury tax with CPA, yeah. rain tax, debt, well, dance I think, tax. I think, I think all rain this. and stormwater is pretty much forever. The uh, you know, have to deal with it. It's, you know what? Yeah. Eventually, it's going to go to everything else but rain. And, yeah. You know. And and it, it's, well, it's, no, it, it's it's pretty tight. Uh, stormwater utility is pretty tight with how you have to spend that money. You're not spending it for fire trucks. You're not spending it for school teachers. You're spending it on stormwater management. Well, like the Social Security trust fund. Well, no, absolutely not like that. <laughs> Just the opposite of that. But, you know. Um, <laughs> you know it. it you can call it what you want, but it's another tax. Yes. And, and John, John's right. And, and the guy from Chicopee that was presenting at, at the, like I said, the MS4 was yeah. pretty clear on that. And he said that the, their their stormwater fee brings in about, I think he said, somewhere around one or 
two million dollars a year maximum but they're spending about 20 million a year just separating their so, yeah. their, 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 sewer, their, their yeah. sewer separating right. system he's there I think he, the number he used was they're about I don't know 65 percent complete they spent about a hundred and I don't know, 150 million, whatever it was. Yeah. The last 35 percent, they figured it's going to cost 220 million. Hadley doesn't have stormwater in his sewer. No, that's yeah, right. You are, you are fortunate that you didn't make right. right. yeah, Many of the cities, you know, the decades, closed uh, system centuries separate. ago, made that decision yeah. where you have one big pipe and there's a little wall that goes down the middle of it on the floor, and stormwater's on one side. And right, the but when it's on the left, and when the stormwater flows, it gets all mixed together and flushes out. Right, it all mixes yeah. together. Yeah. But I, I, think, think, I think it was the same guy that said that they, I think he was the person that said one inch of rain, their normal flow was like three million gallons a day, wow. four million gallons a day. Yeah, well, one yeah. inch of rain raises their flow to 12 million. We don't even compare it to that. You know, he says, so that's the kind of a problem they have. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, then the real problem is all the combined storm outlets. Yeah. You know, they've got to monitor yes. to uh, see yeah. what the... Yeah. Yeah, but anyways, sense. Greenfield had that in Northampton, two, yep. two systems in one. That's yep. what it was. Yep. Well, the nice thing is most of the other towns who are just, you know, who have not, you know, didn't have stormwater uh, or, or, you know, or standards every back then, they're now all putting it into separate systems, and that's great. Because mm -hmm. uh, you don't run into that problem. Right. Any, any, anybody, ones. anybody that had sewer back in the early 1900s has combined. That's it. Right. Really didn't start getting, didn't get a sewer system still. The 60s? Yeah, yeah, the 60s came to have me. Yeah. And, you know, they were smart enough to separate them. Yeah. Whether by law or by choice, I'm not sure. But probably by cost at that point. Because the stormwater was probably already in. Yeah. To some extent. Yeah. Right. So uh, it was just easier to put in a separate, you know, a separate dedicated Most of the stormwater was drainage was built by the farmers, the drainage yeah. system in this town, not, not, not the town. Right. Okay, anyway, back to... Uh, Schedule. Okay. So, like Bill says, we've got you know MS4 and marijuana, which hopefully won't be a monumental tasks to do. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll be more of a detail thing, I think, than anything, especially with the storm water. Yeah. And then we, then we could go into the implementation of the uh, master plan. Okay. So within the implementation, um, we've been spending a lot of time talking about affordable housing inclusionary zoning, mm -hmm. affordable housing trust funds, mm -hmm. and we've spent a lot of time going around in circles on all of those, but within the master plan implementation, I think we'd probably like to wrap those up. And Ashley's working. The, the, yeah, Ashley's, right. Ashley's yeah. Yeah. the inclusionary zoning and the senior housing amendments are both going to be on the annual town meeting. Good. Order. Okay, so they'll take, they'll take, including getting the, getting rid of the trust fund wording, wording for the time being. Okay, here we can come back. Um, just as a piece of information, we may have a lady here from the Valley CDC, CDC okay. in our first meeting of May to talk about affordable housing and the requirements to meet it. Good. And the trust fund, so that I think okay, you know you're, that that that's your own meeting to come. Like, in fact, yeah. I, I saw her last night. And I said that'd be a good meeting to come to because I said Larry will be here, and hopefully yeah. you may can make it, sure. so that um, actually, 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 actually might be as well. And, and, and the, the, norm, the normal meetings are the first first Tuesday. Of the right. Okay, first for, Tuesday for, for PVPC. Okay, we. we talk, is that what Amy Five was talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. She sent yes. me an email today. I didn't get it right. out to everyone. Okay. Yeah. One and of our good. finance committee members is on the CDC board. Okay. So that's why she was making. Right. Did they do the monitor? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And so she's going to explain okay. the process to us. I said that would be great. That would be great. Well, I said Amy, it's not, not going to explain. No, no. There's a lady. There's, there's, a, lady, there's Amy, a lady. There's a lady. There's a. Amy said it's it very is, complicated. Amy said it. Well, we know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, and, we, and then we, we know we, that we're, we're not trying to become experts out. We right. just want to get right. the explanation from mm -hmm. I want to call it the expert from yeah. somebody that actually that does sense. it so we get a better feeling for it as opposed to you know there, there's and no set okay okay so but hopefully that'll be on the first one in May which is why we'd like to move that to the top of the master yeah. plan implementation because we've we've spent what we spent six months on this and we have 
virtually nothing to show for yeah. it. So, I, but we have some momentum going. So I think. Well, like, we didn't have a clear understanding. We still I, don't. I understand. Know that. Right. I understand, still, though. But that's I'm, why I'm asking to make it a priority. Make it a priority within the implementation. Yeah. There is no wolf at our door. At least at 13 percent affordable, which is the highest in Happy Valley, okay. and under the present rate, uh, would. It would take 50 years before no, we get below. I, I know, I know. Well, well, let, let me finish the statement. Okay. okay. <laughs> it, it, it would get. It would take 50 years to get below the 10 percent threshold required by the state. Okay. However, we do have a uh, certain number of units coming off at Mountain View, and uh, so uh, those still wouldn't put us below the 10 percent required. But there is. Not a wolf at our door, but a, a strong pussy cat growling. <laughs> so we, Bill is right. Yeah. We should kind of wrap mm -hmm. this up. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, but I first we have to become educated. I You're think right. The, num John. the number that we heard was that there's 25 units coming off in about five years. Okay. And then I think it's seven or eight years after that, 80 come off. That's gonna okay. be a hit. So in roughly. A dozen years from now, we will lose 105 out of 295 units. That has got to put you under the ten percent. That's correct. However, you know we have some options. We can talk to developers. What can be done to keep them up? In fact, I talked to some people last night mm -hmm. um, about this, so that the selectman. I mentioned it to one of the selectman, one of the selectman <coughs> candidates. A couple of selectman candidates last night, um, and said, you know. This is what's going on. We don't need to do something tomorrow, but we do need to do something reasonably soon to start this. You, and you need to start having the conversation tomorrow, because in five years, right? Because it takes it takes it take, there's a lot of care, actors you have to bring into the, the play to make that happen. Okay. And uh, so you know, anyways, yeah, anyway. there, there's things that, that that need to be done mm -hmm. for both issues, mm -hmm. for both different because there's two different locations. One is about is the 25 units are those small complex right to the west of Stop and Shop Plaza. Okay. okay. And the 80 units are Winfield across the street. Okay. There will still be over 80 plus units left there and plus what they have yes, over at Golden Court. Green, green Leaves over there? Hmm? Green Leaves? No. Well, green, and they have these, when it's, when it's, it's called Winfield Green Leaves. I'm not exactly right. sure. What part of the project? Winfield's in Hadley. <coughs> I think so. Yeah, the family housing is in Hadley, and the some of the the senior rental housing is in Hadley. Yeah, the yeah. senior condos are in Amherst. But in but case, that's it, Winfield. It's that yeah. complex. Greenleaves, yeah. Winfield. It, it's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, I don't know where, where the dividing line. I think Greenleaves Green Green might be the elderly, uh, the senior, and Winfield is the family. Okay, but anyways, the complex. Uh, Across the street from Stop and Shop, okay. on, the, on the south side of Route Nine, mm -hmm. is the 80 units, which you can't even see. Right. Okay. Um, but anyways, we, we we the the selectmen and the planning board need to start doing something yeah. there and getting the dialogue going to find out, you know, how do we keep some or all, and how do we do it? What's required, et cetera, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. how do you going approach them? I yeah. think CDC actually owns, Valley CDC owns the um, Mountain View, I think. I think so. so. That um, might end up not, easier. not coming off. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, 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 then that's something we can discuss with the yeah, lady right, in a month yeah, from now. That'd okay, great. that'd be great. That's fine. Yeah. However, that. before we put the cart before the horse, yeah. we need to get the discussions going and we need to do whatever we reasonably can to keep those things on the books so that we don't fall behind the eight ball. Right. And hopefully, That's selectmen are watching this, or at least the word gets to them that we can't do nothing. That's why, like I said before, with Barry Roberts, that should be required for him to either build it there or build it off site well, and get it done. We, we're changing that now, John. Yeah. Well, anyways, plus the it's, other thing it's is you know, we, sure. we do learn a few lessons along the way that yeah. Mountain. View Apartments was a friendly 40B. It was not friendly at all. They really tucked it to us. Yeah. I mean, they had their toes crossed, fingers crossed. It was something that we were given a good that's lesson. Too bad. But, you know, but, but before we, you know, get, get too carried away with those, I, I'm just making a comment that yeah. we, 
we have to be on top of things. We can't just say, oh, we're set. We've got to, we got to, we got to pull, we truly have to plan these out. No. You've been looking at the implementation schedule as a whole. Were, did you, was, was there anything, were there ones that you specifically thought would be? Well, without knowing too much about any of these, um, I was uh, talking to Larry about trying to identify some of the things that were you know, easier to do so that you could make some progress. And um, one of the things we were talking about was the transfer of development rights bylaw. He said that there are some things that um, could be done to strengthen that. And um, so I wanted to hear back from you uh, about your feelings on if that one um, should move to the top of the priority list to make that uh, work a little better. Yeah, one of the things we talked about was uh, the gym hat. adding the building height trigger to that. Not necessarily the height, but the uh, we have a limitation on Density. the size of a building, yeah. Yeah. and so Jim was that was his idea. So I don't want to steal it, but uh, I think it's a good idea. add some TDR. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we've got a, we've got a seventy-five thousand square foot limit on size footprint. Okay. Seventy-five thousand square foot um, footprint, if you would, and you know by allowing a larger building. And contributing to TDR in a proportional manner, mm -hmm. um, we could allow. We, you know, could mm -hmm. we allow or should we allow larger buildings? One of the things that the town is being press pressured with is, you know, um, business tax dollars. That mm -hmm. there are some businesses. We haven't seen a lot of business growth to speak of in the last, I don't know, ten years, give or take. Not that much land left. And, and that's the <clears throat> point. That that that's another point. Yeah. Your um, people you have zoned is is limited and your choice is either to go out, which you probably don't want to do, or go up, go up. which you probably <clears throat> don't want to do. And you know, so the possible you know, would 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 a developer want to go up? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean we, we don't we don't know that, you know, what's the cost versus the benefit? Um, obviously, you know Is an Amherst doing four or five stories? Well, if you talk to hotels and stuff, that is well, they're, they're, that's because they want apartments. We don't want apartments. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're they're putting business on the bottom floors and the top upper two floors are typically yeah. But you can build a five story building and not have a, uh, apartments. That that's true. And and all, my only comment to that is, is 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 it cost effective? You know, we we don't know. That's something that would have to take some discussion. You know, or possibly do put the put the bylaw out there. Mm -hmm. And does, does a developer, does there anything happen with it? Yeah. She can talk to one of your fellow members that was instrumental in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't worked there. You don't have to go any, yes he has. Uh, he doesn't you don't have to go any further. <laughs> um, I think when we get to that point, when we talk about having listening sessions, yeah. that would probably be a good topic. Yeah, okay. Uh, right. Try to flush some things out and let's bring that stakeholder group in. and. Yeah. That's like that's perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so that was one of the things I was also thinking about was the listening sessions, and um, I was wondering about what topics. So here's one. Here's one. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what can be done. You know, is it you know Joe's favorite words are you know zoning is a fine balance between the rights of the developer and the rights of the of the property owner or the local mm -hmm. the butters whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. and in this case it's an, it's a it's a balance of you know we have this much farmland, we want to preserve farmland, but if we don't sacrifice some land sometimes you won't have farmland because it's going to be too expensive, so right. you know that's a it's a it's a the balancing act is getting more difficult to walk because of the build out occurring on Route 9. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've done some things north and south on 47 to lessen a possibility um, of large facilities going there. But, and, and we also don't want to price it so much. The other thing about that all is you want to make ensure that reasonable mom and pops can sprout and grow. Because if you make land, business land so expensive, all you're going to get are big conglomerates. Yep. 
and the mom and pops are going to be, we can't afford to be in heaven. But even you talk mom and pop, you took the Route 47 corridor, and most of that land now is all tied up in APR. So what the hell are you going to do? Nothing. Uh, yeah, that's going to happen. There are APRs there. and single family detached homes. This is true. So the other thing is we'll at some point probably be looking at reuse. Yeah. Uh, we sort of, we've right. seen some of that already, that their uh, Mountain Farms Mall completely demolished the yep. old Almy's wing to put in the uh, Walmart. Okay. Um, and we'll probably see more of that as well. Is any of that original left? Oh yeah, yeah, the, the from... <laughs> From, like Panera Bread and from, from, to, from basically Barnes and Noble down towards almost to Whole Foods. Almost to Whole yeah. Foods is original, hmm. but it's been completely oh re, redone. Yeah. 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 Okay, but the, the shell is the same. Wow, and I just thought it was just no. leveled but, in. But, but however, you know, Hampshire Mall is now coming into play of, you know, the old mountain farm was a bit easier yeah. to turn into storefronts. Yeah, this is because it wasn't so deep. <clears throat> That's right. Whereas Mount the Hampshire Mall is a very deep facility okay. with a center court down the middle, for lack oh. of a term. Uh -huh. And to make that Route Nine facing of storefronts, I'm never say never, but it'll take. You know, I don't know the cost effectiveness of that, right. so I'm not going to comment. Um, but you know, there's a number of semi-vacant building facilities in there. I mean, they've, yeah. they've been able to keep up with stuff to, to their credit, yeah. but with all the rest of stuff of uh, online ordering and everything else, it's a matter of time before some of those just aren't there anymore. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of them, they're going into service type, uh, not the retail business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, service yeah. business. Re and retail far as, is far as the corridor going north, all these smaller houses, you're going to see corporations buy one, two, and three and knock them down, and that's what's going to happen here. The mom and business is out the window. So, and that's the reality. So, so anyway. listening sessions, anything else on your... Listening sessions. Uh, let's see. I saw a reference to the site plan bylaws, and I, but I wasn't sure what... Uh, if you guys had any feelings about what needed to change there, or we're, we're, we've had a version of site plan approval um, for as long as I've been here, so 30 right. years. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, it was site plan review, then it became site, site plan, plan approval, approval, and it, yeah. then it became. And then it was knocked out because of the suit for Pyramid Corporation. We dissolved it, then we got it back again. It's it's gone through a. Transition. It, 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 it gone through some stuff, and the I mean, it's it. We modify little sections of it here and there as needed, yeah. but for the most part, I personally think site plan approval works pretty well the way it is. Can we the, do? We do yeah. have it. I don't, I don't know the wording of the exact. Kind of, uh, it's a discuss it strengthening the site plan by law and process. Yeah. Okay. So we have a built-in safety valve there, and I don't know how the AG let it go through, but we have authority within site plan approval to waive any condition that we do not consider to be uh, key to the uh, that's to the site to the to the application. Right, that, that's uh, a good thing because um, site plan approvals are supposed to be almost impossible to deny. Uh, if you look at the, because that's not set up under <laughs> legislation, it's set up under a court case. Mm -hmm. And it's a review process, not a permit. And so your basic choices are approving it and approving with conditions, and that's pretty much it. If you're going to disapprove it, because it's for a by right use. Um, so disapproving a site plan is really difficult to do. Our, our site plan, just so you'll, when you read it, you're going to see yeah. it's, it's a special permit process. Yes, that's good. And <clears throat> the reason that was done was be, before the special permit process, we would re-approve it, but there was no way to appeal it if somebody was felt they were hurt by it. Right. Okay. They had to wait for the building inspector to issue the building permit, and, and then I think they have 30 days to, to appeal the building permit. And, and a lot of and a lot of 
developers would get our approval, let's say today, and they wouldn't apply sometime for six, eight, nine, or a year. And so the low, the abutters are constantly hounding the building inspector, have they applied, have they applied, have they applied, and if they haven't applied for the building permit or they don't question the building inspector, he, apply, he, they get, he gets the building permit, he approves it, 30 days goes by, and it's tough luck. Yeah. That happened That's a number of things. That happened a number of times. Now, a lot of site plans do have a, a appeal process for constituents, so you don't have to have that gap. So <coughs> we put it in as a special permit process, simply that it's approved today, the paperwork is filed, there's a 20-day appeal period. Abutters are notified, 21 days, no appeal, go forward. Yep. So and the general, the attorney general made a specific comment to that. It's actually part of our, at the very end of our bylaw, that the only thing that that special permit for site plan approval does is exactly what we said. Okay, um, it's not a special permit, and that they need to jump through all kinds of hoops to get. It's simply for the appeal system. Of it. I mean, usually it's it's a site plan review, right. but you're following the special permit process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although well, so technically you can say anything below a thousand square feet is exempt. So it is a special permit to erect a structure in excess of a thousand square feet. But that's different from the site plan. No, that's it's built into site plan. Because the site plan. plan can't be a special permit. It's got to be an administrative process. Well, okay. ours is set, that's the way ours is set well, up. Maybe that's so. why we, we had to go there to take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you get the zoning bylaw, at the very end of the zoning yeah. bylaw, there is a, a footnote. Yeah. Um, that explains what I think. I, I think I even took the words from that attorney general's approval and put it into the at the end of the bylaw so that it's clear yeah. that this is what it is. Hmm. So that's not confusing it as a true special permit. It's more for the for the process. Hmm. And when, the attorney general approved it that way. Yep. So it gives anybody a, an appeal. It gives anybody a definite appeal period. Yeah, clear starting, a clear start, and a clear you end. Need, you have to have an appeal process. Integrated it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, because two, typically two, you do it like the way you did it. You just follow the same ones you would for a special permit. Yeah. Two years ago, we uh, we no longer require the builders to submit a performance bond, and we let that responsibility go to the building inspector. Okay. Is the board happy with that segment the way it's working now, or should we change it back the way for performance bond? Is there any towns Why you still have it? You still <coughs> can do it. Do it differently, right? You I still mean, can. We, 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 I don't we, know a whole lot that require performance bonds for special permits. Um, we, we had it in our we had it in our site plan approval. Okay. So and what's the performance bond for? To ensure to that make they, sure build, they do it like they build what they say. So that if they don't, then you're going to go take their money and do it like that, well, well, So do? it ended it's up being club. it ended up being a club, and that's what one reason why we dropped it okay. uh, because it's much more effective to have the building inspector deny a uh, CFO. Yeah, that's exactly right. Than <laughs> so cash out the bond, and, and I will speak yeah. for another department. The uh, treasurer's office is quite happy to not have to track performance Absolutely. bonds. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> my wife is the treasurer. Up, up, up to a few, That's a up, conflict of interest. Up to, up to a few years ago, um, the building inspector kept saying he can't deny a CO if they don't build it exactly what they say. And I said, what issue? What's what version of the building code or whatever it was changed? And he then said, okay, I now have authority that if they don't build what they say, I can deny a CO. And that was how the right. elimination of the, of the, of the bond came well, you about. You know what I also do is I also put a clause in there in their condition of approval of the special permit that they can't apply for the CO until they, they've met But that. that's mainly... So that kind of takes the onus off of the building inspector feeling like, oh, I can't, I can't withhold it. Well, no, you can't even apply because the applicant, you can't even ask for it. Oh, would you send me that? <laughs> <laughs> what we, yeah, what we, that yeah, that's, okay. that's a good, good. What, yeah. they, what, what we really wanted was when people put in subdivisions and roads that, that the town is assured that they've put that road right. into compliance. Yeah, that, and that's a different thing because the town's going to end up all yeah. Right. That, that, that but I mean, a, uh, somebody's business or something, 
What the hell is the planning board want to go in there and finish the building of the bill? Well, they don't, I think what they were saying was it's a, it's a carrot. A club, which is we're going to hold on to your money, you're not getting it back. So, to as, as a right. practical matter, we never, we never foreclosed on anything like that, yeah. and it, it was awkward, and we probably would not have liked the results if we had to try to step in. Yeah. And we've been for, fairly fortunate with developers and subdivisions. There have been some communities, John, where. Uh, the developer gets three quarters of the way through the process and goes bankrupt. Yeah. And yeah, that that's happens. why we have the performance for the road. Yeah, right. Because there, we now down. have half the houses have been built and they're expecting town services. And uh, correct. It's not like you can just stop you know, yeah. and not do anything because you've got homeowners there. Now right. fortunately we have not in, in thirty years we've not had to foreclose on a a subdivision performance bond either yeah. although there are a couple of streets out there that but the Harley Road the taxpayers bit the bullet and paid to rebuild that but as I, as I mentioned at town meeting for that particular subdivision that was approved before any of us were on the planning board well I mean that, <laughs> well, that but something. it don't make that's, any that's difference about that but that was the example right, right. Uh, right that, there that, that, was, that was the example of why we needed to make sure yeah. That that's one of the reasons I ran, and, and so yeah, we yeah. just have to do regular right, subdivision rank, and I think yeah, that was, from there now on, nothing. Was Joe Zagranik on that board then? No, no, no. I, I ran yeah, because that's how long they, ago was. they didn't have the capability of handling <clears throat> something like that. Yeah, they figured he was old enough that he went back that way. Well, he remembers it. He was a young man back then, with dark hair. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, I, mean, I think we probably have at least six months of work for you. Okay. It, yes, sounds, right. like it, it sounds like we're in pretty good shape. If you go through that list after and find anything else that yeah. you, know, and there were some things you want to bring forward. Larry, that you were working on like definitions. Yep. That definitions, you've got them. Um, okay. okay, so that's all awesome. uh, yeah, yeah, there were. Oh, let's we'll, we'll let's put that because you've got those. I went over with the building inspector. Yeah, uh, but he says he always not. has heartburn over that yeah. because he tries to define. Yeah. Yeah. So would yeah. you before you clean out your desk? Would you clean out your computer and sure. make sure you email me one of everything that you've worked on? <laughs> okay, uh, because I know that there there have been some transitions and uh, we've had uh, we've worked with other people. We've had this contract for we've about, had me digging stuff out the two people prior to me. Yeah, we, we've had this contract for about fifteen years. Okay, and um, in fact, I initiated it back when I was chair of mm -hmm. PC uh, because Tim Brennan had talked about another town where they had something like this that didn't work out half as well. Um, and so we've had it for quite a while, and people have worked on various projects for us. Uh, and then we look back, and we had we tried to go through some um, um, just some brochures for how the development process works. And uh, I have some, but whoever worked was working on them. You don't seem to have any on your end anymore. Yeah, we got a tough, tough to get that stuff out. It was a, it was a they, they used to be in West Springfield. That's where our office used to be. Oh, okay. And apparently, there was a water sprinkler flood or something uh, when everything was paper <laughs> that uh, pretty much wiped out oh, tons of stuff. Goodness. Yeah, and there, we we've also over the years had your GIS people work on various maps yeah. for us. But as Larry explained at one point. A prior GIS guru had a very unique naming system for the the documents. So yeah. it was hard if, if I didn't already have a copy. Uh -huh. um, there there are paper copies of maps we'd like to have electronically, but no one seems to know how to yeah. uh, how it reach it, them. It would be like uh, you naming your files based on what you had to breakfast that morning. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> but so, you may remember, we have no idea. Um, so, I would appreciate it if, if yeah. I assume you probably have one big file for. Uh, I, I, I have, it's it's, uh, it's 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 pretty well organized from OA on. Okay. So, uh, if you could just do a document dump. Okay. Um, and I'll that's, that's easy. move it to yeah. my server and Jim 
Even if it's on, if it's too big to put it on a, on a flash drive or something, that'd be more convenient. Yeah, as, that opposed be as opposed yeah. to mailing yeah. 50 emails of 20 of two megabytes yeah. each or whatever. Yeah, they'd have John have to print up hard copies of everything. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that'd be great if you could get a couple of flash drives. I could keep one. I keep a lot of stuff on my server on my office. Yeah. Jim keeps a lot of stuff in his laptop. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do not have access to the town hall server, which apparently has only town hall is only within the last month installed the server. server. They have a server now. Whoa, that's good. <laughs> that is great. Uh, Somebody raided the capital fund. They don't couldn't afford it. <laughs> so um, yeah, they have a server. They have a network. The computers can speak to each other nominally, but. Anyway, well, any, um, it's, a, it's a good start. Well, I mean, you guys are our flagship BBA. Uh, you know, we've been doing you for like, I think it's like 13, 15 years, something like that. And uh, sort of everything else is modeled after this. I think we're up to like, we were up at seven at one point. Up in various capacities, doing diff different things. Every town's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. but, you're doing uh, a couple for Hadley, you're doing or the uh, CPA, yeah, CPA. CPA. Yeah, yeah, CPA as well, that's right. The uh, TDR, Hadley was the first with the TDR. Okay. And it's probably certainly the most successful. I don't know how other towns have been successful with it. But, but, but Hadley has some brought that. in some Funky significant yeah. money through the TDR to the APR yeah. fund. I want to okay. say there's well, is it to seven figures? So at one time, Town, the Conservation Commission had to go to town meeting each year to ask for a appropriation to fund the town's match for wow. development rights. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done that in a long time, 15 years. Because you just used the Because funds. we have enough money that comes in from TDR. They, they still have to go to town meeting to authorize the spending of it. Mm -hmm. But. Um, it is not money that is coming out of the general fund. Between between the CPA and the TDR, they've been able to fund the town's portion of APR. Yep. Excellent. And it's it's worked better than we probably any of us ever thought. Yeah, that was the map we were looking at. So and then of course if you share, uh, it'd be it'd be a lot easier for you to get everything in one one flash drive. Oh, and she, she has access. I have access. Everything we ever got the server. Yeah. So okay. She has access to that. Yeah. And, and, yes. and we'll make it. They can tell you what his yeah. Uh, yeah. abbreviation is. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. No, 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 no. They're very well organized. Any, yeah. any. Okay. To the credit of PBPC, <laughs> you know, the people that we've had uh, working with us over the years have been excellent. We have absolutely no Great. complaints about everything. They've, been, they've done an excellent job. We are extremely happy and have had wonderful results and it shows. Yeah. In fact, the reason we have had so much turnover is everyone has left for a better job. <laughs> they get trained well. Except me. Yeah. <laughs> I think, well, you're still leaving. Hey. Hey. Well, what the hey. hell are you guys tapping them on the back so much? You'll fall be, be, be a retired grandfather might be yeah, a, that's it's a promotion. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's good. So. It's all good. Oh, so. So yes, we've, we've enjoyed working with you. It's been good for you, I think, to have, be able to get some hands-on experience yeah. in some of the areas that you're doing. Uh, according to what Tim has told me, not all regional planning agencies have a land use section. No. Uh, right. But uh, to the extent you have one, we're, we're happy to make use of it. Okay. Well, I mean, our feeling is this is this is a program we should be making available to all. We, we have so many, you know, less than half of our towns have professional staff uh, for it, mm -hmm. and so they don't have anything else. And uh, as I say, this is like the flagship. This is like the model, um, and that we would make ourselves available to more and more of the community. They've been taking taking advantage of us, uh, advantage of it. Yeah, it's really worked out pretty well. They want to use as a reference. Have us call Bill and Mike out. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. well, in this, I, 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 little, happy I, little, little, towns, there's a certain fee that goes with that. Consultant fee. Oh yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, we'll give you a discount. Yeah. No free lunches today. So, um, so it looks rather than keep on going. I think. I think yeah. we, yeah, we have. That sounds great. You know, I think you got the pretty year. full. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't yeah. want we don't want to bury it. If you get. Like Bill said, we get these things 
for the, I mean, that's that's a lot to do in the next six months, even for the rest of the year. Right, right. Um, and we do you, have help, so that's good right. too. Right, and you, you have a contract. The contract is typically comes up every our fiscal year ends end of June. End of June. Yeah. So okay. by so July one, we like that we like to have the new contract yeah, at least at our hands. We get it to you around May. Right. And I think last year we at least got the thing signed by everybody, but Larry lost it <laughs> before the fiscal year ran out. However, um, typically within the first month or so of the fiscal year, everything has been formalized and signed and everything, all the T's I's dotted or whatever it might be. The other and, thing, uh, would you just make sure your billing department, they, they got behind the eight ball uh, last year. Their understanding is the town has a a longer time frame after the end of the fiscal year to pay bills than I think some towns. Yeah, because you can, they can encumber that. Yeah. yeah. So I think you're right. It's, not, it's think, not just you. But I think the issue was we didn't get the bill until after the end of the you, fiscal we, we year. Exactly. No, we can encumber. Can encumber it. It. We can encumber it. Right. right. But but give, it, it give us, give us an e even an email yeah. of what to encumber, yeah. so we can let the account and a treasurer know, so they can encumber it. Right. And if we get the bill a little bit later, that's fine. Right. It's usually fine, yeah. but, we, but last year we didn't even know what to encumber. Yeah, and we had, we've had that problem. Like, yeah. You're going to yeah. have some paperwork. Like and yeah. uh, Happy is trying very hard. I think they want to have the, they want to set the last 2018 warrant yeah. in July, within, right. within July. Two weeks. Yeah. No, so, no. so, yeah, they don't want to let the money float. Right. So. Nope. So, you want to get paid? We want to pay our bill. Good. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds good. Well, welcome aboard, Susan. Thank, Thank you very much. Here. It's very nice, nice, to, nice to meet, meet all you. Of you. Yeah. You have any cards? Have any business cards? Oh, not yet. Well, yeah. Huh? Why? No, I don't know when they're coming. She I comes in with no cards. That. What the hell is this? They're supposed to be. I tell you, I still have ordering them. I still have the box of mine that I got six years ago when I started. I'll bring it back. Who do you know wants your card? Everybody knows who you are. Yeah. <laughs> they know where to find me. Right. You live across the river. That's well, you can find right. me in the same place. You're an old dog that's been around for a long time. Right. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Very good. Thank you very nice much. Nice meeting you. Great. Right. Look forward to seeing you in a month. Yes. Sorry to keep you so late. No problem. This is early for us. So you got everything all figured out when you're going to retire? What are you going to do? Uh, pretty much. Pretty much, huh? Pretty much. You going to take a trip around the world or something? Well, we just, you know, uh, uh, traded and bought a new, a new RAV4. So yeah. Well, if we're going to be traveling, you might as well have a car that's not going to break down. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good plan. Good plan. Okay. All very right. Good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you again. Thank nice you. meeting you. Good night. Do we have anything else? I don't have anything. Nice. Else. You have anything, John? No. I have nothing. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. <laughs>